Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the statement from Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey that Brexit has harmed our openness. He was pointing out that if we want more trade, we need to agree more rules internationally, not try to do our own thing. Very interesting because this is what independent experts have been saying for years. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So uh, this attack on Brexit isolationism is all the more remarkable coming from Andrew Bailey of the Bank of England when his predecessor Mark Carney ended his period as governor. Andrew Bailey was appointed by Boris Johnson and we know how Boris Johnson appointed people. It wasn't because of uh, proven competence or anything like that. It was because he was willing to go along with the Brexit mindset. That Boris Johnson only appointed people to senior roles if they were happy to be acolytes of the unholy Brexit. No other considerations could be more important, either individually or as a group. And it was not long before Bailey was accused of making poor decisions in the role. Now, being fair, he was made governor just as the pandemic hit the UK hard, but poor decisions nonetheless. And now his former Brexit buddies are happy to blame him for all the ills of the economy. Brexit has always been the beast that eats its own children. And when Bailey was trying to describe the various causes of inflation and sources of problems for businesses over the last couple of years, he was always careful to avoid mentioning Brexit directly. It was like he was trained by the BBC or something. He would describe the effects of Brexit, but would never use the word when he said that the number one problem for businesses was access to labour, he deftly avoided mentioning that this coincided with leaving the continental labour market. But now, perhaps because he's tired of his Brexit masters throwing him under the bus, or for some other reason, he seems happy to talk about the damage of Brexit. In an article on his statement this week, he insisted that he takes no position on Brexit itself, but he did say that it had led to uh, a lack of openness in the UK economy, which is harming trade. He said that he expects new trading relationships to develop around the world, which of course implies that we've lost others. He didn't pass comment on whether they would be more or less valuable to us than the ones we've lost. But what he did say was for the, in order for these new relationships to develop, they're not just going to happen magically or organically. He said we need to commit to openness and free trade. Now, the Brexiteers almost always claim that they're all about the free trade. Oh, yeah, we love the free trade. But the way you free trade is by agreeing common standards. And this is where Brexiteers cannot bring themselves to agree. Agreeing common standards is anathema to them. The reason they keep talking up trade agreements outside the EU is because they accept that they have to have some measure of reality, but they're trying to ration it. That is actually what Brexiteers are trying to do, ration reality. You know, they like the CPTPP agreement. They like their individual Brexit trade agreements because there's, there's next to nothing to them. You know, it's not because they're good. We know that every single one of them is worse than the arrangements we swap them for. And that they're all very one-sided agreements in the other side's favour. The reason the Brexiteers are happy with them is because they are so light touch. They do almost nothing. They don't seem to factor in that the trade is not very free. I suppose it's easier to not really care about that when the most prominent Brexiteers are not actual traders. They're financiers, landlords, multinational lobbyists. But in the real world, if you want free if you want to free up trade, you harmonise the trading environment. Bailey was talking specifically of financial markets, of course, which might be of interest to the diminishing number of Brexit supporters, because the way they often see it is most of them will accept, OK, we, we can see that trading goods is trickier now. They can, they can appreciate that. They're not stupid. But they'll think because we're mostly a service economy, that actually we're gaining overall. But apart from the fact that a lot of our service economy is actually involved in the trade of goods, like if you if you diminish our trading goods, actually that's a lot of services we no longer need. So it hits that as well. This is not the position being explained by the Bank of England governor because he's focused on the financial markets. Your economy needs to be more open for trade in general, all trade. It's obvious enough. Businesses do not want to mess about with layer upon layer of red tape or to deal with different regulations in different markets. It's confusing, time-consuming, and above all, unprofitable. 
Brexiteers keep saying, well, we will just get rid of the red tape. That's what we want to do. Get rid of the red tape. Well, the way you get rid of red tape is by agreeing common standards. Business in Britain suddenly had to get used to red tape. They never knew existed as a result of Brexit. I don't even mean just small businesses either, although they were, of course, the hardest hit. You even had the chief executive of Marks and Spencer saying, what the hell is this? What? What do you mean? What? You know, he thought he was supportive of Brexit until he found out what it actually meant. And if even people running businesses, large businesses, didn't appreciate just how damaging to the trading environment Brexit would be, how much more ignorant were those privileged politicians who thought that civil servants would just somehow make it all work? That's why they blame Whitehall, or the blob as they call it, isn't it, for the failures of Brexit. They just have it in their heads that civil servants are really good at coming up with plans to implement policies. After all, they've been doing it for centuries. The British civil service was renowned across the world for being really good at coming up with practical solutions to implement policies. So when they couldn't come up with plans to make their Brexit work, they just concluded that, well, Whitehall's blocking it, isn't it? Ally, yes, minister. Didn't occur to them that maybe they were just asking the impossible. You know, trade, it's like hooking up two pieces of technology. You know, like you get your thing and you go, if it, it has to be compatible. If it's completely harmonised, you just connect the two bits together and off you go. If it's less compatible, you're going to need an adapter. And then if you want to plug it into a different piece of technology, it's not just that you need that adapter again. You need a different adapter. And this is what Bailey is saying. You can't just do your own thing because that makes your economy harder to connect to. You need international agreements. And, and who, who should we prioritise those international agreements with? Well, it's a combination of two things. First, how likely are we to get a comprehensive agreement? Because some markets are more open to close agreements than others. You know, currently we have no comprehensive agreements with anyone anymore because most markets around the world are not interested. The only one that was, was the one we were already part of. Second, how important is that market that we wish to engage with? Now, in terms of the combination of these two things, the EU is the obvious priority. Labour have said it's their priority. The Tories don't even have a priority. It's not just that they got the wrong one. Used to be the United States. They did have a priority, the US but they gave up on that a while ago. That in itself is telling. So they had this plan drawn out, which might be a charitable thing to say. It wasn't a realistic plan, like a sketch of a plan, but it didn't work out. And they never bothered to go back and go, okay, we need a new one. They just went, they just bumbled around, ignoring the fact that most of that plan no longer works. You know, the Tories are hailing their trade agreements, including CPTPP. So if, if, if it's all going swimmingly, if we're, all, if we're creating these new trading relationships and it's all going marvellously, why is the governor of the Bank of England, who spent the last few years keeping shtum about Brexit, towing the line on Brexit, why is he now suddenly saying, look, Brexit has harmed the openness of our economy? He's like, never said this. Because he doesn't think that the direction Brexiteers have taken since is establishing new opportunities. All they've done is close them off. And he's been blamed for the consequences of those policies now. But it doesn't matter what sort of trade you're talking about, goods or services, or what kind of services even. If you want to trade with another market, you follow their rules. If their rules are the same as your rules, it's easy. Because you know the lay of the land, you understand it. It's, like you're, it's almost like you're not trading with a different market at all. The more different those rules are, the more unfamiliar they are, the harder it is, and the more likely you are to be put off trading with that market at all. Brexiteers have made a virtue of making our rules very different to anyone else's. This is what Bailey is pointing out. And the Tories are not going to be the government which addresses it. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.